This is Joey. I'm Sadie. My name is Andy. And we're most of Speedy Ortiz. And these are records, records in, in my life. life. Thank you so much for being on Records on My Life. How are you? How's the tour going? Fantastic. Going great. Uh, this is kind of the first cold weather uh, besides Texas cold snap that we've experienced. So uh, we miss the sun, but the vibes are good. It's colder, sorry, it's colder here than Philly, Philadelphia? We don't know because we basically haven't been home in two months. <laughs> right, right. That makes sense. Tell us, please tell us about your latest record that dropped a couple of months ago, um, Rabbit Rabbit. Different, yeah. different, sorry, going in, it's kind of, it was kind of a different setup because you had your longtime band join as members and in the studio. How did it, how did it come together? Yeah, uh, the album's called Rabbit Rabbit. It came out on September 1st, and that's what we've been touring on. Um, we worked on it a little more slowly than some of the previous records. Uh, Beginning on my end in the middle of 2021, uh, we kind of all came together to start working on it early in 2022. And then um, we spent a while in some cool studios. I don't know if Andy wants to tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, I loved the studios that we spent time in. Uh, Rancho de la Luna in Joshua Tree a Very uh, has a lot of character. Um, David Ketching, who runs that place, is an amazing guy, uh, really had a big impact on the record being there and, and uh, using all the cool guitars and equipment that was there and the desert itself. And then uh, Sonic Ranch in Tornillo, Texas is also totally different, but also really cool and incredible. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the largest home recording uh, complex in the world. Uh, wow. Residential studio complex. Yes. Is that the Sonic? Uh, is that the Pecan? Is, that, is it it's like surrounded by a Pecan ranch, farm? Yes. A it's, pecan a, ranch? it's a several right. generation pecan ranch that's been converted into this studio complex that I believe has five or six different studios as well as housing for all of the artists. An Argentine band, El Mato, was there while we were there, so we would see them at dinner. Um, that's fantastic. Yeah, it was cool. Rancho de la Luna, too. We say that ten times. Yeah. It's a pretty, I mean, it's got an amazing history. That whole stoner rock thing, I think, was born out of that scene I'm an outrider. Yeah, I mean, that one we could say is a home studio because it's literally a home that has been converted into a studio. The the control room is right off the kitchen. You know, we're tracking guitars, like, on the couch. Uh, Joey's in a, a drum room that, I don't know what it would have been, another bedroom, but... Um, yeah, it, yeah. But, it, it, you know, despite the circumstances of, of how, how it's built, it sounds incredible, and... You know, there's a testament to that and all kinds of stuff from that desert rock scene, as you're um, describing. And, and like the Mark Lanigan bubblegum record that they oh. did there is among my favorite yeah. sounding things of all time. There's some uh, a lot of the things on the desert sessions that have brought together so many of our favorite musicians um, just sound unbelievable. And they all come out of the magic of that house. So we were grateful to get to avail ourselves of all that stuff and of David's like institutional knowledge of who's sure. been through and what they used on what and what microphone was on this bass amp and uh, what <laughs> what guitar PJ Harvey sang through the pickups right. on, like that kind of stuff. Did that inspire you a bit more? I mean, like when I was working on the pre-production for the album, before we got to the the rehearsal phase together, I like had the sounds of that studio in mind and kind of trying to coax those kinds of sounds out of the demo. So it was cool to get to wind up there um, sort of after the fact. Guys, thank you again for being on Records in My Life. The show is about you and you and you only and the records that inspire you. Philadelphia has, you guys are based out of Philadelphia now and, it, and it's, it's amazing hotbed of music. Can you each give me a favorite record from there or one that we should know about? Yes. Um, I'm going to say the band Lilies, uh, specifically the album The Three Way, which came out, I believe, in 1999. Uh, totally insane album. Super influential to me. The Lilies are uh, an absolutely incredible band whose records are all kind of different. Um, and I would urge anyone watching or listening to this to check them out. The, the three-way is like, 
it sounds like a scrambled mix of like kinks songs or something but they're like all like insane sounding like so again it's like some of their stuff was very shoegazy like exomy and the photo band that album is like a little more like that uh anyway yeah they're they're all all their albums are cool but that one's my specific uh philly pick there's a lot of great stuff i'm just gonna pick a recent favorite that's gotten a lot of play and the record is called separation by elia lee okay so uh we've experienced a, a lapse in time due to a fire alarm we were talking about philly bands we're still talking about philly bands I was reminiscing about a, a nice run I had in Seattle five years ago when uh, Hypnic Jerks by Spirit of the Beehive came out. I think the, the songwriting's incredible, the textures that band comes up with and continues to develop are so incredible, and I think they've really paved the way for a current generation of, like, quote-unquote, shoegaze bands that uh, Philly has become associated with now. I almost shouted out another band, and I think I'll, I'll shout them out, too. Um, there's a band called Blue Smiley that I think is kind of contemporary of Spirit of the Beehive. Their album is just about to be pressed to vinyl, I think, for the first time by Top Shelf. Sorry, did you say the name of the record? I didn't hear <sighs> I my can't hearings. remember what it's called. Blue, Because it was only on, like, Bandcamp until just now. Uh, but Blue Smiley is the name of okay. the, the project. Amazing. And what record has eluded, I haven't asked this question in a long time, but what record has eluded your collection, which you have looked for on vinyl? Is this a Philly band or just any no, record? No, any band in general. Oh, boy. Okay. This is a, so there's a band, a very obscure band uh, that was on Shimmy Disc. I don't know if you remember that record label the from Kramer. the early 90s. Yeah. Uh, the band's called Raymond Listen. Uh, they ended up changing their name to Licorice Root Orchestra later, but specifically that Raymond Listen record is super good. Uh, impossible to find on vinyl. Uh, I'm going to say one that, that has eluded me for a long time, but is about to not elude me. <laughs> um, Brainiac's Smack Bunny Baby oh. has was a very limited pressing and has been out of print for a very, very, very long time. I've had the CD for, for quite a while, but it has not been available uh, on LP. In as long as I've been aware of them, uh, and they're repressing it uh, coming up. So I, I pre-ordered it immediately, and I'm very excited to finally have one of my fave records. You know, I haven't searched all too hard for it, but I've come across one of them one time at a record store for quite a lot of money, but either of the last two Carp records... Um, which I'm, I'm a huge fan of both of those. Yeah. What record would you like to have witnessed uh, being, a fly, being a fly on the wall in the studio? You know, it would be, it would be really painful, uh, but, but probably melancholy in the infinite sadness. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just want to know how, how they recorded some of those guitar solos. I feel like I'd love to see like Steely Dan at their most bickering. I feel like I would hear some some burns, some <laughs> bits that I would never forget. Not to mention the incredible playing and and session playing. And I feel like Gaucho <laughs> by Steely Dan would be really fun to watch. With fun to to watch as an invisible participant. is purely uh, perfunctory. I would like to have been there when Gated Reverb was discovered, which I think was, this, if I understand the story correctly, it was Peter Gabriel and uh, uh, I, I can't remember who produced that record. It was not, maybe not Brian Eno, but it was like... Or uh, was it Phil Collins? Well, Phil Collins and Peter Gabriel were both in there and they had the talkback mic on and they had a gate on the talkback mic and they heard like the, I think if I understand correctly, it was like snare sound and they heard it in the room and they're like, whoa, that sounded cool. And then they put it on the, the song. Wow. And that was like the first time that Gated Reverb was ever used. So I think it'd be cool to be there and be like, ah, Gated Reverb. Favorite Canadian record? Oh. Uh, the Unicorns, Who Will Cut Our Hair When We're Gone. And I remember hearing the Clues album 
playing at an all night diner in in Portland, Maine, um, and being really obsessed with it. It's the uh, it's it's a member of Unicorns. Yep. Wow. And the drummer is the the guy who played on the Arcade Fire EP, uh, the only Arcade Fire release I liked at all. Um, but it's just saying it's like such a sick record, and I can picture the cover really well, but I can't remember the title. So I have two uh, fairly recent ones, but Joe Pass. The first... <laughs> yeah, we yes. we should say Joe Pass. Yes, yes. they're yes. playing tonight. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, um, yeah, Joe... Miriam, uh, Pool Blood. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pool Blood indeed. Yeah. Um, but one of my favorites is definitely a gaze among them by Big Brave. The band Ott, Sun sure. Coming Down, yeah. was a record that I probably listened to about 100 times. I think it's a fantastic record. It's a great track. Another Montreal band, too. That's right. We have yeah. more Canadians to shout out. <laughs> yes, please. Backwash. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mon- another Montreal, right? Another Montrealer who I've collaborated with, um, but the record I really love by her is God Has Nothing to Do With This, Leave yeah. Him Out of It. Oh, I was going to say, I really like that Andy Schauf record, The Party. It's a great record. Metric, Old World Underground, where are you now? I'm one year younger than Joey and have a different tolerance for uh, Bush-era protest indie pop. <laughs> uh, I think I'm out. Oh, and also, there was this Canadian band called Each Other that was from a long, like 10 years ago. That band was sick. They covered, they were a good band. Yeah. Fantastic. One more time with real and you siphoned out the feeling Guys, thank you again for being on Records of My Life. We're on to the speed round. Yeah. Weed, water, or wine for listening to your favorite record or writing? <laughs> Two answers. Like Look at this thing. Yeah. We writing. got water right here. I'm drinking <laughs> you know? water. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big time weed guy for writing, especially. Yeah. Well, I love to stay hydrated, but <laughs> I really love wine for both of those things. Sure. That's a va- valid water. answer. Wine. Wine. Totally. Wine. Record of your high school years? Uh, it's going to be Radiohead, I guess. Uh, probably Amnesiac. Hail to the Thief's pretty big for me, but I would say Keep It Like a Secret by Built to Spill. Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> we got to do the callbacks on the show, otherwise there'd be no, no laughter, right? Yeah. Coffee with an artist, alive or dead? Well, dead, probably. <laughs> that's good that's great I'd prefer a live that's usually the other joke answer if you could have a cup of coffee with any artist alive or dead Britney Spears there's a coffee shop in Orlando that I know she likes and she's like signed a bunch of things on the wall so we, we could go there uh, I don't know that I would have the best time but because uh, I think it might be kind of weird but uh, I'm obsessed with Andy Kaufman I so that's my answer, but I think it might be a weird coffee hang, but I would do it. Words of wisdom for your fans and our audience. Wine, water, <laughs> weed. That's good. Is that me? That's we can we can leave with that. Do you have any? <laughs> yeah, stay stay alive. Happy, healthy. Subscribe or check out our Patreon. And this year we've switched it up. And you can win a record just for leaving a comment. Thank you again, and we love you. Peace.